All right, man, torture talk. You know what it is. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning to you. Good morning to you, man. Get up. Go to work. All you broke, just go to work. Get a job. Go to work. <laughs> you know, that's what people moms be saying and shit. <laughs> Get up. Get up. You always sleeping. It's it's one o'clock in the afternoon. Mom, it's my it's my it's my day off. So what? Go do something. It's like they don't want you to sleep. <laughs> like, like mom, I'm tired. I, I've been working 16 hours straight for, for five days straight. Get up, do something. You always in the bed. You always do this. So, all right, man. Good morning to y'all. Good morning. Good morning. Look, so this morning I'm gonna talk about. Something that Akon said about Kendrick and Drake, uh, Drake's beef between the two. And um, I think it's very fascinating what he said. And I want y'all to listen to it because it's, it's, it makes a lot of sense. So before I get into that, you know, this is Torture Talk. Like, share, subscribe to the page. If you're new here, let me work for your subscription today. All the beautiful, sexy ladies put one in the chat. All the fellas, y'all know where to find the ones at. Just don't harass them. I don't sell no merch, but I do have content that's absolutely free. But if you want, if you want to leave a donation, you don't have to. But if you want to. Links on the screen, cash at PayPal is in the description. Let me know where you're from. They call me the hidden gem. I went from 1,300 subscribers to over 11,000, and I'm about to be a million tomorrow morning. When y'all wake up in the morning, y'all say, damn, he got a million subscribers. Yeah, that's how it's going to be. So look, man, we're going to get into this clip, man, and we'll be back to discuss. You know what I'm saying. So let's go. All right, man. Shout out to Akon, man. Always been one of, one of uh, artists I always liked. So let's go. And M and 50 Cent. <laughs> the Kendrick and Drake thing that already kind of like died down. We need a new one. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That was that was low hanging fruit. Oh were you, were you watching all that Kendrick and Drake stuff? I was hearing a lot about it. It right. hurt my heart though. Why? Why so? Because I like both of them. Yeah, man, it was hard. Huh? I love both of them. And but I gotta admit though, when it all, I like the way it resolved. Right. Because I felt that Kendrick had never got his just due for what he really contributes to the culture. Mm -hmm. And this was a way of him getting that without it being forced or politically organized. Mm. That's a great, great way of putting it. That's a great way of putting it. And I don't know if I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. I do understand because he would be more, he would be more closer to Kendrick than I am because he's in the industry and I'm not. But I understand what he's saying. I definitely think that I mean, fuck it. No, he's right. He's right. Because I definitely think that Kendrick um, recognized, people recognize Kendrick for his talent, but I don't think people recognize Kendrick as being one of the one of the greatest and one of the most uh, influential, not popular, but influential. Popular could come next. I think Drake is the popular. Uh, Kendrick is the influential one. You know what I'm saying? That's how it works. But I think... Kendrick has stepped in that space now where the popularity comes in. And what he's saying is absolutely correct. He's absolutely correct. He definitely got his just due. Mm. It mm. was through just pure talent. Yeah, yeah, the art form. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And I thought it was necessary. As talented as Drake is, right? And I, everybody know me from past conversations, interviews, how I feel about Drake as an artist. I believe he's amazing, right? Mm -hmm. Kendrick has always been one of one from a perspective of he brought the culture in the eyes of people in a way that it was never been uh, put on a plate. Mm -hmm. Like, we say hip-hop. That's 100% facts right there. And, and it, what he's saying is that Kendrick displayed something to people who only listened and watched Drake. And they thought that Drake was actually what hip hop really was. But then Kendrick came and showed people like, no, this guy, he's hip. He, he is, he's using a rap component, but I am hip hop. This is what hip hop really is. It's really raw talent. And that's one thing that you got to understand. Hip hop is based, hip hop and rap music and rap, it's based on pure talent. It just so happens that people who use it they're not really that talented and they just do anything to make money. They, if it has been infiltrated 
by people who really don't know what they're doing with the with what they do. They know what they're doing and they're purposely doing this because every time you ask about lyrics, most people always say, well, I'm not I'm not trying to be all lyrical. I'm not trying to be like that because they know that that is the that's what the art form comes in at. That's where it's it's um, mainly appreciated when that part comes in. But when you got people who uh, take advantage of it and they give people a tiny bit of what it really is, and then people take it for granted and people take it and they, and they, they run different ways with it. So like you would say, you got rappers who feed their audience stuff that's really no good for them. It's like junk food rap. You know what I'm saying? It's really no good. It's no good for the soul. It's no good for the, the meaning. It's no good for the... It just pushes a certain propaganda or certain image that they want them themselves to be pushed. Kendrick Lamar is a little bit different. You see, Drake is at the pinnacle of that, that toxic uh, food. You know what I'm saying? He's the, the pinnacle. Kendrick is at the pinnacle of soul food or good food for the soul. So... When they clash at the top, you see who wins. The healthy one wins over the toxic, the junk food. Because if you look at that, at uh, everybody likes junk food. Don't get me wrong. Everybody loves junk food, but also people love soul food too. But the thing is about junk food is people like to eat junk food more because it's sweet. It's, 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 it, it, it's, it's, uh, it's, how would I say this? You get that feeling when you eat it. You get a rush. But the thing about uh, junk food is after after eating it for a certain time, you get sick. And you start to uh, get slow and weak. That's what happens. So when you eat the soul food, and what I mean by soul food, I mean healthy soul food, you get energy. You get power. It might not give you energy right away. Like that shot of sugar, but it gives you energy. And this is what it is between Kendrick and Drake. Between the two, one is soul food and one is junk food. And the realness of what hip hop's supposed to represent. But in actuality, we didn't really, we didn't really behave in that manner. Right, yeah, we, we say one thing and do another. You, you understand what I'm yeah, saying? Yep. That's 100% facts. That's a hundred percent facts. We didn't behave in that manner. And that's, that's Drake. Drake, he comes out and does this music and people listen to it. And the first thing they say is that's how rap is. That's exactly how hip hop is. And they don't give, they don't give people like Kendrick and anybody else a chance. Just so happens Kendrick did what he did and he pushed, he, he kicked the door open. Now you got to listen to him. Kendrick held it and always held that stance and never let it go. And I think it was the fact that he was so committed to that stance that made it seem so much realer than everything else when it came to a battle perspective. Because it wasn't about who was the most lyrical. It was the most truthful. Mm. That's and that's where Kendrick killed it. That's 100% facts. Oh, my God. It's, about, it's not about who's the most lyrical. It's about who's the most truthful. That's 100% facts. And I know we are going to jump in the comments and say, well, he, the thing is, he said that Drake had a baby. You got to think a little bit more deeper than that. You got to understand exactly what he's saying. You know what I'm saying? The, the whole premise of what Kendrick was saying was truthful. Whether he threw, whether you saying he threw a lie in there about the baby, the daughter, whatever. The whole premise was truthful. His, his truths outweighed the lies. You know what I'm saying? That's just that. If that's the case, I still think he told the truth about everything, even the daughter. I don't see why I don't see why that would be a lie. Drake has Drake has hit the kid before. Why wouldn't he do it again? So. I heard that, bro. Yeah, and, and when it was going down, and like I say, you know, I, I'm 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 from the West Coast. I love Kendrick, and for me to love Kendrick, I never hated Drake. You know, we didn't right. drop a Drake record, right? And we didn't like, you know what I'm saying? None of that stuff. But I saw 
what it did. And, you know, people say, oh, what it did for the culture. And I'm just, I've been through somewhere it didn't end as well. No, right. You know what and I'm saying? Because you got to think, you got to think, especially in our generation today, present, rap battles is the cause of about 40% of hip-hop deaths. Right. Yeah, man. Like, literally, just yeah. the rap battles. Especially That's, he's spitting some facts. That's a fact. That's a fact. All of these drill artists, all these turn up artists, bro, they be out here really getting it and doing stuff to each other and then making a song right after it, bro. It's insane, bro. It's insane. And then all of these record execs, some of these record labels be taking out life insurance policies on you dudes. And you dudes is out here killing each other and they getting paid from it. They're getting the not your family. I don't know. Maybe they do give some money to the families. I don't know, but they're taking, they're, they're taking the money and running with it. You dudes get killed. The high likelihood of you getting killed. They're making money off of it. It's crazy. Look at these drill artists. Oh my God, bro. I was going to say that. Artists, they mm -hmm. dropping each other left and right. Yeah, just man. On, and they smoking each other on, on social media. Yeah, bro. Like, yeah, I did this. What's up? What we doing? Yeah. Yeah. Like this, it's real life for them. You know what I'm saying? So that right there was a scary moment for me because it kind of reminded me of what the Pac and Biggie situation was. But if it would have went beyond that, you understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. Because it was it was going there. Yeah. Because one thing about the West Coast, they don't play about that. None of that. Right. Like they don't just listen back. when I was in the street back then, if I had an issue, I would depend on my West Coast guys before I would depend on my East Coast guys. I'm being mm -hmm. a thousand percent. Cause if it was time for smoke, these on the West Coast side, yeah, it was happening. Yeah, like, it wasn't no conversation. Nah, okay, I I I can agree with that, and I'm gonna be honest with y'all. West Coast dudes don't play, and I'm not saying that East Coast dudes do, but West Coast dudes are a little more organized. Well, I would say much more organized when it comes to certain things, because the gang life is real life. It's not just something that did just do out there no everybody's it's it, everybody's in it you might have some people that may not be in it in it but for the most part if one of your family members somebody's in it i live in a certain area where there's no gang violence here none none at all there's nobody affiliated no nope nothing so when something happens and like he says they come together Real quickly here, sometimes I feel like you got to fend for yourself here, on on the east side. You know what I'm saying? And the thing that I was hoping too is that like Kendrick and Drake, they not gonna meet up and see somebody and just, they just start squaring up. Right, it's the circles it's too the though. Circles, and, and then sometimes not even the circles. It could be somebody that never slapped hands with Drake, yeah. never slapped hands with Kendrick at all, and and, and take it on. Because so. everybody, like especially right now, when you're looking at a, it's a clout culture. Mm -hmm. Oh my God! Right, so yeah, everybody looking for that stripe on social media, looking for that stripe just in general. Just say, okay, I handled that for yeah. you. Yeah, man. Like, bro, yeah. I ain't asked you to handle that for me. Right? Bro. Yeah, like, no, you didn't do that for me, bro. <laughs> be like, man, take that post. Yeah. And yeah, that's that. That's that's your boy top five. That's top five. He's he he. It it, it again. People muddy the waters because they want to be a part of something, and I believe that that's exactly what top five is doing. He has to get his name out there somewhere. And it's, and he, he's a rapper, but he ain't doing no music. He ain't doing no music. He doing more talking than music. I could see if he did a song and then and then say, yeah, I'm this and can. But for some people, music doesn't resonate more than straight up saying you're gonna do something to somebody when you see them. Because that's a that is more than a contra controversial take. That's a threat. But you can say I was playing, it could be anything. But some people don't play like that. They don't play like that. They'll take your head off for that. They don't play like that. Especially in a time <laughs> yeah. where the RICO laws right oh now God, are in full man. effect. You don't even want none of that smoke in no no kind of description yeah, by man. any means. Yeah, it, it's crazy because the, the lockup is real now, Man, too. it's real. Hell they, they yeah. Grab, they, they grab them by the group. It ain't by just one person. Yeah. yeah because you influenced everybody. You, as soon as they put RICO on racketeering. It's a wrap. Boom. Yeah. Goodbye. Hell yeah, man. Now we're
And that's the thing, right? A lot of y'all got to understand this whole, when it comes to like, when it comes to Rico and it comes to this, rappers don't even have to be involved. You know what I'm saying? But once someone say they got it from you and they could connect y'all together and you know that person, yeah, they pulling you in too. You know what I'm saying? They pulling you in too. That's why a lot of rappers, a lot of rappers get caught up in these Rico cases and these cases because they still tied to the streets. They still tied to their dudes that they grew up with. And dudes say, well, you ain't going to forget about me. I took this, I took this L for you. You got to, you know what I'm saying? You got to come, you got to come correct. So, but let's keep it going. Everybody knows in the backdrop, Sean Carter, that you promised the South that the next time the Super Bowl came through, it would be a Louisiana affair. And then when Diddy goes and gets into trouble and you need to convince the white people you're still in control. You bring I, I don't understand how, I don't understand how she tied that together. I'm going to try to figure it out, but we already heard this, so I'm not going to play that. Um... But yeah, yeah, so I'm going to tag this guy in this uh, video. Make sure y'all go subscribe to him. Y'all can find him in the description. Yeah, so Akon's right, man. I definitely think that Kendrick is more of, he, he displayed something that people haven't seen in years because you got to understand where the culture came from and where it ended up, where it, where it ended up at. Where it ended up at, is you got a lot of microwave airhead music. And a lot of people who listen to rap music, they only listen for that. You ain't the shit. You're not even a fart. And all these songs, like, people listen to that stuff and they think that that's how all hip-hop is. But the reason why, to me, the reason why hip-hop has slipped into, uh, slipped into a, a position where we are... Uh, kind of losing it is all the music that you have heard a good portion of it is really not good music anymore and this is the reason why hip-hop is in the state it's in because people are starting to figure out that oh they just they just they just repackaging the same stuff and just selling it over it's not different here and I, that's why i say that kendrick lamar exposing drake may have been a bad thing for hip-hop and i think that it's going to take a long time for it to come back and he's one of the guys that's willing to work to do it and i think that he did this on purpose so he can rebuild it and i 100 percent feel like that i feel like kendrick has destroyed hip-hop as a whole the mainstream part of it just to rebuild it back up so either way, man, make sure y'all go, uh, you know, do all that. All right, man. See y'all. Peace. Bye. <laughs>